Hi, Bill Barber from Polygon here. In this video, you'll learn how to use the wood flooring generator to create the perfect flooring for your scenes. I'll give a brief overview of the different settings and show you how to export the final material for your 3D software. All the settings I'm going to show you will be the same regardless of where you're using it. You can open it in a Substance plugin if you're using 3ds Max, Maya, or any other software uh, that supports the latest Substance plugin. If you're using software that doesn't have a plugin like Blender, uh, you can use the generator in Substance Player, which is where I'm going to be demonstrating it. It's also worth noting that Substance Player is a free download. I'll be sure to include a link to it and the relevant add-ons in the description below. Okay, so the first category of settings we have here are some general settings. Most importantly, the resolution of the final textures. Now, by default, this is set to 512, and this is so the viewport updates nice and fast while you're making alterations. We'll increase this number to 4K when it's time to export, but for now, I'm going to set it to 1024, as that still runs pretty nicely on my particular hardware setup. There is also a random seed value here, which will basically create a complete different version of the current material based on the settings below. Next we have global parameters. From here we can choose our workflow, either metallic roughness or specular glossy. Now this is an important one to get right and it will depend on what application you're using. In Blender for example, it's best to go with the metallic roughness workflow um, as that works well with the principled shader. However, let's say you're using the Corona renderer, uh, you'll be better off using specular glossy. In case you're uncertain, the easiest way to tell is to look at the map types that your shader needs. A specular workflow will typically give you a set of color, specular, gloss, and normal map textures, whereas a metalness workflow will give you a set of diffuse, metalness, roughness, and normal textures. After that, we have the target material scale. By default, this is set to cover an area of two and a half meters by two and a half meters. Uh, you can use this to get a good approximation of the scaling you'll want to use when applying the material to your scene. Then we have wood species, where you can choose from a variety of different types of wood. There are a lot, quite a lot to choose from, um, and it will obviously have a huge impact on the look of the final material. Next up is the planks layout, another one that will provide huge differences to the final result. You'll find layouts like herringbone and mosaic, quite a few others, uh, as well as obviously the standard strip one that it defaults to. There is also a control for adjusting the random seed for randomness in these layouts, um, as well as one for orientation. The next category, plank parameters, allows you to make finer changes to the overall look. These will differ depending on the layout that you've selected. The wood strip layout, for example, there are several parameters that affect the width and length and spacing of the planks. Uh, there's a control for the bevel around the planks. You can pick the soaring radial position and randomization that will give you a different look to the wood pattern, as well as some controls for adding variation to the height and tilt of each plank. I won't go through all the possible variables um, for the other layouts in this section, but they all follow the same basic principle. They're just tailored differently um, to whatever layout you've selected. Next up, we have wood parameters section. Um, this allows you to make overall variation adjustments. Firstly, we have controls for color. We can create variations to the hue, saturation, and intensity. Uh, following on from that is a section on knots where you can change the amount and scale of the knots in the wood uh, as well as adding variation to that scale uh, and alter the branching angle um, which gives it a slightly different look. Then we have the heartwood settings. Now heartwood is the inside area of the tree uh, that the wood was cut from which is typically a lighter colour than the outer areas. Uh, it, it allows even more variation in the overall material. Okay, moving on from that, we have the finish section, which has all the controls you might expect for the finish of the final flooring. You can control the uh, amount of sanding, how smooth the planks are, whether or not the wood has been stained, uh, the type of stain that's used, um, as well as the, the absorption values to alter the look of the selected stain. Next, you can add in a ceruse effect, which I hope I'm pronouncing correctly. <laughs> this is basically a white stained effect popular in certain wood types. And finally, we have the overall finish, where you can choose between a gloss, satin, or matte finish for your flooring. Okay, moving on to the next category, we have our age parameters, where you can add a number of imperfections to your wood. Uh, we have controls for scratches, dents, and general imperfections like spills and other residues. One note on this, uh, the effects are quite small in scale. Uh, and often quite subtle, uh, especially with the scratches. So you'll likely want to up the resolution to 4K when, I make a, when making these sort of final adjustments. 
Finally, we have a category for making final tweaks to the material. They are fairly self-explanatory, uh, with the exception of the normal format, which I'll cover in a moment. Now I'm going to quickly go over exporting so you can take your finished material and generate a PBR texture set to use in other applications. If you're using a plugin directly in your application rather than Substance Player, you can ignore this part. Now here in the shader settings, we can adjust the normal format. Depending on your render engine and software, you may want to adjust these. I, for example, use Blender uh, for most of my projects, and for that you'd want OpenGL. Right, before we open the export window, we need to head right back up to the top of the settings panel and set the resolution to what we want for our exported textures. I'm gonna select 4K and then head over and click here on the export as bitmap button. As you can see, this opens up a new window um, uh, where we can set up our export. Uh, by default, all these various texture types are available, but I'm going to disable most of them <laughs> and just take the base color, roughness, normal and height textures as they tend to work great in Blender as is. Now let's head up to the file type. Um, I tend to go with TIFF here uh, for the extra color depth. And then the only thing left to do is set up the export folder. Once everything is set up, simply hit export and your textures will be saved. And that's it. From there, you can simply load them into your target application and you're good to go.